What's going on, world? Eric Lawton here from Battlebred Canines, the channel dedicated to the working dogs we all know and love. And today I wanted to touch on a topic that has been requested since forever ago, and that is what is the best dog for a survival situation? Now honestly, I could probably write a whole book on this topic, but for this video, I'm only going to cover some basic starting points. Just a heads up, I just got a new phone and I'm trying to test the quality of the built-in microphone in comparison to my other means of recording, so drop a comment to let me know how it sounds. Also, this is just my first real dive into this topic, so be sure to include your opinions in the comment section. We're all in this together. Now before we dive in, don't forget to stomp on that like button and subscribe for more free content. Also, feel free to visit BattlebredCanines.com for updates and free downloadable content. If you would like to support the BBK9 family, visit BattlebredMerch.com and check out some of my merch designs. I keep the prices as low as possible. If you would like to show support in other ways, please give this video a share across all of your social media platforms. Now originally I was going to do like a top 10 list for the best survival dogs, but after careful consideration and input from the BBK9 family, I have decided to take a different approach. So up front, these are only my initial thoughts and opinions, and again, I would like to further this project after more input from all of you. A survival dog should be one that suits one's individual needs. This can be broken down a few different ways. First off, do you plan on bugging in or bugging out? Bugging in is basically stockpiling and fortifying your home to hunker down in a survival scenario. Bugging out is when you actually leave your home to find safety or to travel to a pre-selected bug out location, whether by vehicle or on foot. The first thing to consider is the climate and terrain of your area. This could be a huge factor when selecting a dog for survival if you live in an area with extreme weather conditions. You have to remember, when the power goes out, the heat and air conditioning go with it. So be sure to select a dog fit to live in rugged conditions. Now let me say up front, I will not include any breed that isn't known for protection of home and family. If I left any breed out, be sure to let me know in the comments, but don't get mad because I didn't include, say, the Golden Retriever. Your Golden Retriever might be very protective, but the fact is most are not bred for this purpose. I also left out some of the very rare breeds that some would say should be included, but this is because I haven't done the extensive research on the breeds themselves. The dogs in this list for bugging in are not going to be your best options for bugging out because I've included dogs with a lot of mass and heavy bone. These dogs can definitely keep up on short hikes, but if you plan on traveling for days at a time on foot, the dogs listed in the bugging in sections are probably not the best options. On the other hand, Dogs listed for bugging out can double as a dog fit for bugging in. Did you get all that? Now remember, the dogs listed here are based on extreme temperatures. Your best bet would be to go to Wikipedia, search your area and find the record highs and lows to figure out whether or not you fall into either of these categories. If and when the heat and air conditioning is no longer available, a lot of the dogs living in extreme climates simply won't survive. Now let's dive in. The cold weather dogs for bugging in are the Bernese Mountain Dog, the Tibetan Mastiff, and the Caucasian Shepherd. The cold weather dogs for bugging out are the Siberian Husky, the Alaskan Malamute, the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, the Shiba Inu, the Akita, the German Shepherd, the Norwegian Elkhound, the Anatolian Shepherd, and the Rottweiler depending on its size and coat. The Rottweiler should be double coated to handle the extreme cold. There is also a couple different sizes for Rottweilers. A good cold weather bug out Rottweiler shouldn't be over 110 pounds and should also have an athletic build. Anything larger than that is more of a bug in dog in my opinion. The hot weather dogs for bugging in are the Great Dane, the Connie Corso, the Presa Canario, the Kangal, the Anatolian Shepherd, and the Borbel. Hot weather dogs for bugging out are the Belgian Malinois, the Doberman, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, the American Pitbull Terrier, the American Staffordshire Terrier, the American Sentinel Canine and other performance bred band dogs, the Bull Herder, in this case being a game American Pitbull Terrier crossed to a Malinois or a Dutch Shepherd, and the Dogo Argentino. The Dogo Argentino is a great dog for this purpose, but depending on your situation, the white coat can be an asset or a liability. I prefer a dog that is easier to camouflage in the bush and at night. I feel like the performance bred American Bulldog and the working pit bulldog should also be included in this list as well. Like the Rottweiler, the American Bulldog and the Working Pit Bulldog can vary in size and shape. 
For example, a huge bully type or Johnson type American Bulldog that weighs 135 pounds with a smashed in muzzle probably isn't the best choice for a hot weather bug out type dog. However, a performance type Bulldog with a longer muzzle at 80 to 100 pounds should do just fine. The working pit bulldog falls into the same category. I'm starting to notice a consistent look in a lot of these dogs, but there are still some who are just too big to survive the extreme heat in a bug out scenario. Again, I highly recommend more of a bug out type dog because they can double as a bug in dog as well. You might think your property is untouchable, but the actual odds of your land being compromised in this shit hit the fan scenario might surprise you. So I can't stress this enough, be prepared for any and everything. To wrap things up, we are facing a lot of uncertainties in the world today. The number one priority for your family should be survival. I have a feeling that as years go on and things get worse, the value of a well-bred survival dog will only increase. The canine will always be your first line of defense, whether on your homestead or wherever you camp for the night. Don't forget to stomp on that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and if you haven't already, share this video to spread awareness. I'll see you guys next time, I love you all, and as always, God bless.